you want to learn how to make America's favorite crackers, Cheez-Its, Wheat Thins, and Ritz, I'm going to show you how. First cracker on our list is Cheez-Its. I love these crackers because they're loaded full of fresh cheddar. They're buttery, they're crumbly, they're absolutely delicious. We're gonna make this cracker in a food processor because we want to blend up that cheese really well. So into our food processor, like I said, we're going to add in our cheese. For some reason, I love red cheddar. I know it doesn't taste different, but I feel like it does and it like melts differently and everything. I just love it. But you can use any type of cheddar you like. Then we have our flour and a little bit of salt. Now all I want to do is just blend this up for around 15 seconds or so until the cheese is nice and finely ground. Lovely, this is what we're looking for. I kind of like orange flour, nice and fine. Now into here, we're going to add in our cold cubed butter. And then again, on with our hat and just blend it for a few seconds until you're gonna get coarse breadcrumbs. There you go. A little bit coarser than before. So this is why it's really important to have cold butter in your crackers because softened or even warm butter will not work. It'll make your dough greasy. What we want is cold butter, which will give us those lovely kind of little airy pockets in our crackers. So this is looking good. Now, lastly, here we have some ice cold water. I'm going to run the machine. I'm slowly going to drizzle this in and I'm going to stop when I see that my dough is coming together. There you go. You can hear it coming together before you actually see it. So this is what it's supposed to look like. If it's a little bit drier, that's totally fine. Doughs always get wetter as they sit. But look at that, a lovely orange, cheesy cracker dough. I always say this for my bold bakers out there, when you're making doughs, pastries, breads, when your dough cleans the bowl, just like that, it means you have like the perfect amount of liquid in there. So I'm very happy with that. Now, here is our dough, it's looking good. I'm gonna wrap this up in some cling wrap and we are going to chill it. Now, for those of you who are wondering, can you make this dough by hand? Yes, you can, and you can chop up your cheese as fine as possible, but for best results, do it on a food processor if possible. A cracker dough ready to go. We're gonna pop this into the fridge, let it chill for around an hour, and then it'll be ready to roll out. So before you roll out your crackers, preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. So I found the easiest way to roll out these crackers is to do it straight on the parchment. So here I have a little bit of flour on my parchment. I've got my cracker. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on top of that and then just roll out as thin as you can to around, you're talking roughly nine by 13 inches. So here's a fun fact about cheese at crackers that you might not have known. They've been around since the 1920s, so a really long time. And the flavor was based on a baked rare bit. Now, as far as I know, a rare bit is a Welsh dish and it's kind of like a toasted sandwich, cheesy with a little bit of mustard, like really delicious, but that's where they got this flavor profile was from a rare bit. Regardless of where they got it from, it's absolutely delicious. So there you go, I got it as thin as I can. Now, if you want to just give a little trim to any uneven edges and just get them straight. Now, grab your ruler because we are going to be cutting crackers that are roughly around an inch by an inch squared. Now, if you wanna make this dough in advance and freeze it, and that is totally fine. Or you can cut your crackers out, freeze those, and then bake them off fresh. Now that they're all cut, I take a little wooden skewer, the base of it, the flat part, and do a little hole in the middle, which is like that trademark look of a Cheez-It. Okay, lovely, these look great. I'm gonna bring in my tray. I'm wondering, should I have done the cutting on the tray? <laughs> Let's see how we get these on. Oh, lovely! Our oven just preheated, I heard it ping, so let's get these guys in there. So bake your cheese that's off for around 12 to 15 minutes until you know that they're baked, but you don't let them get too brown. Now, as they're baking, I like to bake off one tray at a time just so you get like the perfect bake on them. So while they're baking, then just roll out the next tray and get it ready to go into the oven. Ah, oh, look at these lovely little crackers. Mm. They smell amazing too, are really cheesy and buttery and absolutely delicious. When you let these cool down, if you can wait that long, they will keep in an airtight container for up to a week. Oh my gosh, absolutely delicious. 
Let's move on to our next cracker. The next popular cracker we are going to make completely homemade is a Ritz cracker. I love these. They're bubbly and light and really buttery. They're so delicious. I'm delighted to be able to make these at home. Okay, so in a nice big bowl, we're going to add in our flour, baking powder, a little bit of sugar, and salt. Give those a little mix together. These crackers are so simple, just a few ingredients and then they last in your cupboard for ages. You can even freeze the raw dough and then bake them off fresh whenever you want them with any of the crackers we're making here today. Next up is our cold butter. Now, just like the last cracker, you want it to be nice and cold and not soft or at room temperature. So you can do this with a fork or the easier thing to do is just go in with your fingers and rub it in just like you're making a pastry or a crumble. This is the way that I learned from the nuns all those years ago in Ireland in home economics class. <laughs> There we go, look at that. Do you see that? A few little lumps of butter in there. It has texture, it's kind of like coarse breadcrumbs a little bit. Now let's add in our oil. Just so you know, for the oil, you can use vegetable oil, canola oil, sunflower oil. You can also use olive oil, which is a bit of a healthier oil. It also has really good flavor. Okay, this is looking lovely. It's kind of lumpy, this is what we're going for. Now here again, we have some lovely cold water and we're just going to stir this in until our dough forms. And then just bring your dough together. There we go. Another ball of dough, another clean bowl. This is looking fantastic. This dough is a little bit soft. So what we are going to do is again, chill this just like our last one. So here we have our Ritz cracker dough, nice and chilled. I'm just gonna cut this in half. So I have a half to work with at each time flour my surface. This is a little bit of a wetter dough, so don't be shy with that flour. Okie dokie, now let's roll out this bad boy. So you want to roll this out until around an eighth of an inch thick, but to be honest with you, I would say get it as thin as possible is your best gauge because the thinner it is, the crisper your cracker and also the bubblier your cracker. It'll just make it like so much nicer. I'm starting to see the countertop underneath my dough. So I think this is looking pretty good. Here I have around an inch and a half cutter. I'm just gonna cut out my Ritz crackers and pop them on to my baking tray. Once they're all on a tray, I'm gonna take my skewer that I used for the other crackers and the pointy end this time, I'm just going to boop, 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 boop. Just so when they bake, they don't all puff up like little pockets. Once you've poked all your crackers, here I have a little bit of egg wash. And you just wanna very gently just egg wash the crackers. This just makes them a lovely golden brown and shiny. If you don't do this, they look a little bit kind of dull. Lastly, we're going to sprinkle with a tiny bit of salt on top just to give them a little bit of extra flavor. Okie dokie, I'm excited for these ones. Let's get them into the oven. Bake your Ritz crackers at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. They love a hot oven. And you only want to bake them for around 10 minutes or until they're golden brown. These look lovely, golden brown. They puffed up a little bit, absolutely lovely. So here's what I want to do. While they're just hot out of the oven, I have some melted butter here. And you just want to brush them with the melted butter while they're still warm it kind of soaks into the cracker, makes them extra shiny and makes them extra delicious. So don't miss that step. These look lovely, they're a great snack. They're so crisp, they taste amazing. Once they go cold, store them in an airtight container for up to a week. Okay, we're gonna set these aside and we're gonna get started on our wheat thins. We've already done two amazing crackers. Now this next one is one of my favorite to have with a little wedge of cheese on it. I love this recipe, also great to put in George's lunchbox. In a nice big bowl, I'm going to add in my whole wheat flour, a little bit of regular flour. We're gonna cut that whole wheat flour with a little bit of regular, some salt, and a little bit of sugar. Mixy mixy with our fork. I swear one of the most common tools I use in the kitchen is a fork. Now, just like before, cubed cold butter, in it goes. Now you can do this with a fork or you can just get straight down to business and go in with your hands. It's just so much easier. When baking, I love to get my hands dirty. You can just really tell what's going on so much better. So there you go. Very similar to the other crackers. This is what we're going for. Kind of coarse breadcrumbs, a few lumps of butter in there, small lumps of butter. This is great. Now we have our cold water again. Drizzle that into your dough and then just mix it around until it comes together. 
The one thing I love about these crackers is the addition of the whole wheat flour because it gives them a lovely nutty flavor. And then there's also more oils and fats in whole wheat flour, which is also adds extra flavor. This dough is a little bit on the drier side. It's gonna take around four to five tablespoons of water. That's why I kind of left that varying amount in the recipe. Ta-da! Do, 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 do. Three for three. <laughs> now I'm just gonna give that a little knead on the countertop. There we go, lovely. Now this dough just needs around 30 minutes or so in the fridge, not as much time. So if you want to use it after 30 minutes, it should be good to go. We just want to let those glutens relax and make it easier to roll. Okay, lovely, our wheat thins dough is ready. Divide it in half, make it easier to work with. We're going to do the same thing here that we did with our Cheez-Its because we're cutting it into small little squares is do it on your paper because we are very smart bakers and we know this by now. Okay, now same again, roll it out as thin as you can. This is a really lovely dough to work with. I have to say I love working with whole wheat and I use it more and more just in my everyday baking, especially with George. It has amazing flavor, better than plain white flour. It has a nuttiness, it has um, all of the nutrients in the bram and the endosperm, and it's just delicious. Here we go again with my ruler. I am never without my ruler. And we are going to cut these a little bit bigger than our Cheez-Its, so around an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter. So with your pizza cutter, just cut all the way in one direction. Now turn it over this way, and we are going to cut this way. And remember, just like the other crackers, if you want to trim off the ends to flatten them, feel free to do that. And then with our skewer, here we go again with our skewer. I'm just gonna do like nine little holes in each one. Just do this really fast. You don't have to spend ages on it. Okay, lovely. Here I go again now. Oh, this is nice. There we go, perfect. Onto our tray. Lovely jubbly, everybody looking good. Let's get them into the oven. Bake your wheat thins off at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius for roughly 14 minutes or so until a light golden brown. While they're baking, roll out the other ones and then rotate them into the oven. Look at these lovely little crackers. They are so sweet. They're crisp, they're golden brown, and they smell even a little bit nutty because of that whole wheat flour that we used. They're perfect for a lunchbox, to put in your car if you're stuck in traffic, to take with you on the train, whatever it is, even to have a little bit of cheese. Once these cool down, these will also keep in an airtight container for up to a week. There's a reason these crackers are America's favorite, so definitely try and make them at home. And stick around to check out more of my videos where I show you how to make homemade goldfish, homemade animal crackers, and even Starbucks frappuccinos.